Well, we talked about kinetics. We introduced rate laws and <clears throat> talked about one of two ways to determine the rate law. One was the initial rate method. And then we spent the last little bit of lecture talking about graphical methods for doing uh, determining rate laws. And so we're going to spend the rest of the, the talk, rest of this little section, finishing up discussing the graphical methods. And this is what we call the integrated, integrated rate laws. So if you have the slide, slides, these are posted, so we're looking to look at slide five, or this is slide four at the moment. What you can see is that uh, if you look at concentration versus time, the rate has a general curve and eventually curves down to zero. And this is an exponential decay for the most, or pretty close to an exponential decay for most of the reactions. The trouble is when you plot data like this, it all looks the same. Very fast decrease and a slow kind of peter out. It's always what it is. And depending on how aggressive that curve is, it depends on the order. And by visual inspection, you usually can't tell. So we have to really result, uh, rely on other methods. And this stems from, again, our, our orders. We can take each of our, our, our rate equations. So we have a first order uh, uh, integrated rate law, which says that the natural log of A at time t will equal the natural log of A, that's the concentration of A at time 0, minus the rate constant times t. The second order rate law will be 1 over A at time t will equal 1 over A times 0 minus kt. And then the zeroth order says that A at time t will equal A at time 0 minus kt. Sorry, this is plus kt. Okay. <clears throat> so these are our three forms. And what this means is that we can, these are all linear equations. These are all of the general form y is equal to mx plus b. And so therefore, if we plot them, y versus x, x versus y, we should be able to get some straight lines. And, and the slope of those lines can tell us different things. So. To maximize the amount of information, though, if this was really a linear equ equation, what we would be plotting would be ln of a. So this would be equal to um, a constant, where this aspect would be equal to m versus t. And so what we really need to be plotting in this first example is not the concentration versus time but we would plot the natural log of the concentration of A versus time. And from that, we should get a straight line if it's first order. And the slope of that line would be equal to negative k. Should be equal to negative k. In a similar fashion, we could plot 1 over A versus time. And we should get a straight line with a slope equal to positive k. And if it were zero order, a plot of A versus T would give us a straight line with a slope equal to k. Now, depending on be depending on which way we plot these, depending on which way we plot these, we should get straight lines and depending on which one gives us a straight line will give us the order of the reaction. So it's kind of backwards, you know, we don't actually know what the order is, so we we plot them all. It's like, oh my gosh, three plots. Well, it turns out with Excel, this is two seconds. You know, It doesn't take any time whatsoever to do. So let's take a look at an example. You should have all downloaded the, the Excel document given in the bit.ly link in the last lecture. And let's take a quick peek at it. All right. This is all 
So what I'm going to do is, if you look at if you look at chapter five, uh, um, the slide number five, there's a bunch of data on there, and so we're going to plot that data one of two, a couple different ways. So if we take a look at the Excel document, here's the data. We see um, the time data just reproduced in an Excel document. Take a few seconds to do this, and you can easily plot that. Now, if we were to plot this information, you can you can select all the data and add a plot of a particular inserted chart of a particular type. But I've already done that on one of these separate slides, and you can see the molarity versus time. We see this gent gentle slope that we're so used to seeing. Let's shrink this down a little. Gentle slope used to what we're seeing doesn't tell us much but what's telling is if we instead plot the data versus the natural log so to calculate the natural log you would enter an equal sign ln and then you select this concentration data and it'll convert that into a logarithmic form and then you copy the data down if you haven't seen the Excel tutorial, then go watch the Excel tutorial, and that's listed in the course Blackboard. And it goes through these simple procedures that I just did. This is, this is in the Excel portion of the class. Now we have this natural log data, which we can then plot versus time. And if you do that, you get a straight line. And that straight line, you can actually do the residual for this and see that, that this really is a straight line. The slope of that line should be should be equal to negative k, and so we can look at the uh, linear form of this uh, equation. Y is equal to m x plus b, m being the slope, and so we can then take in this example m would be equal to negative 3.50 times 10 to the minus third. That would equal negative k for the first order reaction. And so therefore, k is equal to 3.5 times 10 to the minus third. And this, the units would appropriately be inverse molar inverse seconds. Once we see the linear plot, we know that it is first order with respect to a. And therefore, we know the rate law. Rate is equal to k times. And we can then use that information and our newly found k to calculate the rate at any time. For the second order rate law, what we see is that we know the form, differential form of the equation, rate is equal to k a squared. The um, integrated form would be. 1 over a at time t will equal kt plus 1 over a at time 0. Again, a, 1 over a at time 0 is a constant, and so what we can do is we can use this to plot our data 1 over a from our plot. This should be an increasing slope with a value of k. And so we would just plot our data and extract our value again from the slope. So let's take a look at example. If we go to slide 7, here's this time concentration data reproduced in the Excel document. Down near the bottom of this slide, there's a slide 7 version. We see this reaction taking place. If we take the natural log of the concentration, Again, this is a relatively trivial procedure. It's equal to ln times the concentration. And you get the, the value shown. You just copy it down. Or you can also do equals to 1 divided by the concentration. Get the values shown on the, the farthest column. You can then plot this data. So let's take a look at three different plots. We're going to take a look at the plot is, is of concentration versus time. We're going to look at the concentration, the natural log of the concentration 
versus time. Then we're going to take a look at the 1 over the concentration versus time. So again, concentration versus time, we see it's kind of this gentle bow in it. It's not really a straight line. We can actually fit that um, to a linear equation, do a linear loose squares analysis, and see if we can actually determine uh, what the slope is. But that does not, that's not going to be very useful for us. We can see, again, we can see that slope isn't, uh, it isn't horribly straight. A plot of 1 over m actually looks fairly straight. So if we plot 1 over, um, so neither, neither molarity versus time or 1 over a natural log of molarity versus time are relatively straight. But a plot of 1 over the molarity is a linear equation. And from this, we can obtain the slope. Find that k is equal to 2. We see that the slope is equal to 2.41 times 10 to the minus 7th. This would be equal to the value of k. Again, then once we have that, we can plug that into any of our rate equations. Rate is equal to k a squared. k a squared and use that to predict the rate at some other value. So to reiterate, all we need to do is plot the data in one of these three forms. I'm going to skip over the, the concentration versus time for the zeroth order, but for the zeroth order it's the same basic procedure except we're looking with concentration versus time. You can tell it when it's zeroth order we plot concentration versus time, it'll be a linear plot, which is one of the only one we don't normally see. Let's take a look at 13.96 in your textbook. All right. And we're going to plot the data a number of different ways. So if you take a look at this, right, so we're going to, if we take 13.96 and we examine data, we can plot um, the time versus the molarity. We can make a list of the time versus molarity. We can do a number of plots. So if we take a look at the molarity as a function of time, We can see this, this is what it looks like. It's not very linear. And from because it isn't very linear, we can say that, oh, this is probably not a zeroth order. We can do the same plot using, uh, this looks like 1 over molarity, or natural log versus molarity. And we see that, again, it's the best fit, the best line we get, is for the 1 over molarity plot. This tells us that 13, in, in the example 13.96, that this is a second order reaction with respect to the reagent, which is, which is CLO. And so we can then use that to figure out what the rate constant is. And we can take the rate constant, abstract it from the data, and we get uh, the value from the plot. That simple. Right. So here is the rate constant, 2.35 times 10 to the minus 7th. Once you have the data plotted, it's relatively trivial. So let's take a look at a, a, a standard problem that where we use the integrated rate laws. So here we're going to use the integrated rate laws. The assumption is that we know what the order is. We know what the rate constant is. And we know some other information. So let's take a look at a good, good problem. All right. Here we have some cyclopropane. It isomerizes to form a cyclopropene. I'm just going to label them compound A and compound B in a first order process. So here they tell us that it's first order. Now this is important. That means that 
the rate is equal to Ka. And the fact that it is first order also means that we know that the natural log of A at time We also know that a at time t, natural log of a at time t, will equal the natural log of a at time 0 minus kt. <clears throat> and so we can take this and then answer whatever questions that we deal with. We haven't even got to the problem, but we know this little bit of information. The fact that it says it's a first order process allows us to say this. So then they say that the rate constant, 6.7 times 10 to the minus fourth inverse seconds, This is important. That means that this is a this is seconds would be our preferred unit. And so they ask us how much A is left. What is the concentration of A after 30 minutes? So we so we have our unit time, 30 minutes. Well, here's the first row. 30 minutes. Well, we we really want to do this in seconds. So this is 1800 seconds. says 1800 seconds would go by. We want to know how and what's the molarity after 1800 seconds. And so what this means is that our initial concentration A at time 0 would be equal to 0 0.05 molar. And our final concentration A at time T is the one we don't know. After that point though, we know that ln A we know that it will equal natural log of A at time t. So the natural log of A at time 0 would be 0 0.05 molar minus k, which was given to us, 6.7 times 10 to the minus fourth inverse seconds, and t in seconds, 1800 seconds. We can then do a little bit of math. This becomes negative 1.206. The natural log of 0.05 is equal to negative 2.99. This becomes equal to negative 4.201. So the natural log of A time T is equal to negative 4.201. To convert from the natural log to a number, we would take property of logs, e to the, take e of both sides is equal to e to the negative 4.201. And so on our calculators, we would enter that as, as depending on how your calculator works, e to the x I get an answer of the concentration of A at time t would be equal to 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2 molar which also makes sense it starts at 0 0.5 molar it produces down focus on, this is a property of logs, e to the x is equal to y, x is equal to the natural log of y. All right.
e to the x, this is a property of logs, e to the x is equal to y, x is equal to the natural log of y. It's complementary operations, like multiplication and division. So figure out how to enter these numbers into your calculator, and you'll be all set. So that's a more traditional way of using the um, rate law. You use a known rate law and a known constant to figure out the other missing information, um, usually relating time. All right, and we'll pick it up from there in class.